Chapter 5 discusses data manipulation and transaction control. Okay. We'll start with the insert command. An insert command is used to add records to existing tables. Um, you identify the table in the insert into clause. Okay. Unlike the select clause, uh, in this one the first line of the first clause identifies the table first. Uh, you specify data using the values clause and as we discussed in class using a strict insert statement you can only add one row at a time to a table we're going to learn later on that um, you can use a subquery to add multiple rows with one statement but if you're going to use um, an insert command uh, with the values clause it's one record at a time Here's the syntax diagram on page 139. Uh, any data that is non-numeric, in other words, character type data or date data, you need to put that in the single quotes. And you have the option to add a list of column names in your insert into clause. Now, again, I'm going to remind you, the square brackets means optional. Okay. If you do not use the list of column names, and notice the list of column names separated by comma and closed in parentheses, if you do not use the list of column names in your insert into clause, you must provide a data value for every single column. Excuse me. You must provide a data value or at least acknowledge each column in the order it was built in the table. And you can use the describe command to see the structure of the table to know the column names and their order. Okay. Now, if you know that you don't want to provide a value for every single column when you're inserting the, the record into the table, then simply provide the column names for which you do have data values. And again, you provide them in any order you want. However, the data values must be in the exact same order. In other words, the first column name in your list has to match the first data value in your list of data values in the values clause. Okay. Okay. Pages 140 to 145 have several examples of insert commands. Okay. Note that um, this example, the first example here, I believe is on page 140, and this second one here is on page 145, and there are several others uh, in between on pages 140 through 145. Okay. If you want to insert a null value into a column, you can simply use the null keyword. In this example, uh, because they did not provide a list of column names in the insert into clause, there's no list of column names up here, so they must provide either a data value or at least acknowledge each column name in that their correct order. Now, this particular field or column name, they don't have a value to enter in there, so they use the keyword no. Now, keep in mind, some fields, by definition, some columns in their definition, have a not null constraint. Um, those are columns where um, you may want to provide a default value, or if there's no default value, you have to provide a value. Um, and very likely, the first value in any table is going to be the primary key. Okay, that's just good design habit to have your first column or multiple columns be your primary key. Okay, a virtual column, remember, is not does not hold actual data. In the example of the account manager table, the AM earned field, the AM earned column, 
is a virtual column that is made up of the values in AM sal plus the values in AM com. Now again, it's a virtual column, so it doesn't hold actual data. If this table is ever referenced, then if the if the column AM earn column is ever referenced, the results of the reference is the data in the AM sal plus the data in the AM com. Okay. So in the insert statement, by attempting to add a value to the AM earn column, is what they're doing here, will result in an error. You cannot use an insert operation on a virtual column. Okay, when you add or modify table to the data, the data is checked for compliance with any applicable constraints. Okay. If there's a not null constraint, you must provide a value for that column um, unless of course there is a default value and other constraints are um, you know checked as well a uh, unique constraint would would be checked to make sure that there is no other value in that field in any other record in the table before that uh, insert statement can be um, you know, accepted. Again, I say insert statement or it could be modified. It could be a modify statement. Okay. Um, activating the default option. You can use the keyword default in your values clause, although it's not required. And, and please, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's not required to use the default keyword. If you simply leave that field um, without a date, data value, then the default value will automatically or implicitly, I-M-P-L-I-C-I-T-L-Y, implicitly applied. Using the default keyword explicitly adds the default to that field. Okay. We're going to see those terms implicit and explicit um, again later in this presentation. Okay, you can use a subquery in place of the values clause to insert data in the table by grabbing that data from another existing table. Okay. So in this example we're going to insert into the account bonus table these three fields. AMID, AM sale, and AM region. Okay. We're going to use a subquery. Sub means within, and remember a query is a select statement. So within this insert statement, we're going to have a select statement, and it's going to select, you know, the appropriate fields: the AMID field, the AM sal field, the region field, from the account manager table, and then all of the records, the data from these three fields from all of the records in the account manager table will be inserted into the account bonus table. And this is that example where I said um, we would see that this is an example where you can add multiple records or insert multiple records into a table, um, but this is an exception to that insert into statement using the values clause. 